Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Well, it's that time of the week. This is the Cryptid of the Week for this particular series. And again, a brief synopsis. Every single week, I'm going to have a random cryptid. Just completely pick that random from the website, uh, cryptids.wikia.com. And whatever the random page link clicks on, it'll take me to the one I'm going to talk about here. And in this case, this is fascinating to note because it goes to show the extent that some people play on the belief that people have involving cryptids. And it has to do with one that was completely made up. This was a hoax. And this was a hoax that occurred back in the 1800s, but... It still generated a huge amount of popularity, all of course when it comes to chasing the dollar itself. And what I'm talking about here is the cryptid known as Hydrarchos, but may also go by the name as Hydargos or Hydragos, and you'll see a picture of it here. Now the reason why I call it a hoax is because in fact it was determined to be 100% fake. Now the actual skeleton itself was real. Um, so it wasn't like a mock-up in terms of plastic or wood or anything along those lines. Rather, the way it was fake was the person that made this particular skeleton or assembled it together made it through multiple pieces of skeletons from different animals. And they just put it all together, placed it on the display, and then charged 25 cents at that time to get people interested into seeing this what they called Leviathan and the gentleman that did this was a guy by the name of Albert Koch although he's also apparently known as Dr. Albert Koch but even the doctor part seems to be something that is up to interpretation so even his title as a doctor could have been made up so when this happened this hoax happened you have to go back to the 1800s somewhere around 1840s to be exact However, Albert Koch, Dr. Koch, got his uh, hands on this particular skeleton. It is unknown. He claims that he found it in Alabama. But whenever the people there, especially those that were um, hobbyists or those that were studied when it came to um, skeletons or prehistoric dinosaur skeletons, they started to notice one thing. So here's what he would do. He would get this skeleton, which measured about 114 feet long, and he would assemble it town by town. So it was like a traveling road show of sorts. And he would put it on display. And anybody who was interested in seeing his newfound discovery, what he would call a Leviathan, or refer to it as the biblical Leviathan, anybody could see it. Um, but the charge was 25 cents. I tried to do an inflation calculator to get an idea of how much he was charging back then based on today's dollars. And the inflation calculators only go back to the early 1900s. So using that as the basis and then roughly going back, uh, like doubling it towards the 1840s timeline, then it seems like he was charging anywhere from around 7 to $10 for people to see this biblical leviathan and it was quite impressive 114 foot long it was a real skeleton people could go up to it and um, touch it look at it i don't know if this uh if people had too many cameras in their possession at that point but they could at least um you know be able to interact uh, just have a field day like have a family trip and go see this sea serpent he also apparently called it a sea serpent as well now the interesting thing about it is as this um hydrarchos was traveling the world with uh, dr albert koch more and more people started to see the flaws within the skeleton itself for example people would see that the teeth the teeth some of them looked much newer than other ones like for example some were really really old looking teeth and other ones were very new looking teeth um, which uh, nobody had ever heard of a fossil getting old one part and then getting younger in the other part also people were noticing those 
again that were studied when it comes to fossilizations of dinosaurs that sure enough it looked like this skeleton was made up of several different pieces in fact it was later found out that the main piece of skeletons that this dinosaur came from this biblical leviathan came from was from a dinosaur that goes by the name of basilosaurus which you'll see a picture of here so basically that's what he did how he came into possession i don't know but those were real skeletons he came into possession of some basilosauruses and combined them together probably elongated them uh, made sure that it looked like the version that he wanted to have when it came to his leviathan and then that way he could start selling tickets and he could start getting interest and make a quick buck and then run off to the next city before people started to catch on in other words he seemed like he was like a modern day huckster the kind that you would see uh, portrayed like on The Simpsons or on any other show mocking the fast-talking salesman that would just try to get people interested in something like a snake oil salesman and then when people start realizing hey this isn't the real thing then he's off by then and what could they do at that point um, this was in the 1840s um, there obviously transportation wasn't really huge like it is today and certainly anything involving um, communication lines I mean it would take weeks for one piece of mail to get to the next town informing people about this Dr. Albert Koch but that's how he did it and then eventually no doubt word of mouth even at that time eventually would catch up to him and that's when um, he had to stop doing this um, also um, fascinating note though uh, the skeleton is real again the the information as far as the skeleton that's that's good to go um, what's interesting to note is that the basilosaurus itself seems to be a hoax on its own and what I mean is this um, the basilosaurus again you'll see another picture of here this creature was given the name basilosaurus originally and when it was named that way apparently it was found to be a marine mammal that's why it was given the saurus part but apparently it was the wrong designation because the person, a gentleman by the name of Richard Owen, I think he may have been the person that actually discovered the Basilosaurus, he wanted to rename it the Zuglodon, which stood for the yoked tooth. I don't know why, but apparently that's what he wanted to do. But as is customary when it comes to the name regarding any kind of dinosaur, whatever name sticks first, it stays. Although uh, I wonder why in this case the Basilosaurus could not be changed to Zygodon because everyone knows uh, tied the story tied to the Brontosaurus and how it was the wrong designation and thus had to be renamed a different dinosaur, the Apatosaurus, I believe. And so why that worked in that case and in here the Basilosaurus it did not, I don't know. But in any research tied to uh, the Hydrarchos, um, it's commonly referred to as being, again, skeletons consisting of the Basilosaurus. But if you ever see the name Zuglodon also uh, being as the, as the number of skeletons tied to the Hydrarchos, then you'll know exactly why. It's because it's that particular dinosaur the Basilosaurus is also the Zuglodon, so pretty fascinating stuff. But yeah, that's the story tied to the Hydrachos, a creature that was completely fake, at least in the sense of its true existence, all done by a huckster that was trying to ensure that anything involving interest, uh, anything involving fascination with this real uh, like uh, dinosaur-like sea serpent, or as he called it, Leviathan, Yep, you could definitely see it as long as you paid close to $10 at that time for it, then he uh, had it for your pleasure. So, Anyways, if, any, uh, if anyone knows any other tales tied to the Hardrachos and of Dr. Carl Koch himself, um, or Dr. Abel Koch himself, then please let me know, uh, post your comments, share them below. I tried to see if there was any more information tied to this doctor and what the whereabouts of him were afterward. The only other thing I could find was that he was apparently a German who immigrated to the United States, um, and the reason why he created this, not just because, of course, to make a quick buck, but it was also because at that time, there was a swelling interest in the United States involving sea snakes. Um, why? I don't know, but that seemed to be the common theme. 
And because of that, um, anything involving uh, the sea serpent, he completely played into the hands of the folks gullible enough to uh, be fascinating by this. And in that point, he made his money. So I tried to see if anything happened to him afterward, but no, no news tied to that at all. Um, the closest that could I could come to when it came to this uh, dinosaur, this fossil itself, uh, eventually it was bought by a Persian or a Russian royal zoological cabinet in the 1800s, 1848 to be exact, and that was it. That was the last heard of this particular skeleton. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.